Previously on Glee. I mean, my Harry Potter kitchen. Until then, thank you and good luck. That was cool. New kitchen. New book. That must mean my Harry Potter kitchen is back and welcome to year two. If it's your first time on my channel, welcome. My Harry Potter kitchen is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all of the food and drink inside. And if you like what you see and you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new video. Speaking of which, if it is a new series, and that means we need a new intro. So let's get into it. As always, we're going to be reading through the books page by page, looking out for any mention of food and drink. And when we see them, we will bring those recipes to life. So let's not waste any more time and get stuck in to chapter one of the Chamber of Secrets, The Worst Birthday. <laughs> we literally don't need to look far at all because the first recipe is in the first sentence. That's a pretty good sign of things to come. Not for the first time, an argument had broken out over breakfast at number four. Later on in the chapter, it goes on to mention fried eggs and bacon in a frying pan. But just making a savoury breakfast is a bit too plain for my Harry Potter kitchen. So we're going to transform some desserts into our breakfast. This is how it's done. If you want to recreate this recipe, then all of the ingredients and the measurements can be found on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. Okay, first things first, we're gonna make our fried eggs. And these are gonna be made out of panna cotta with an orange jelly yolk. So we're gonna start off by making our jelly because it's gonna take the longest time to set. And all we need to do is first bloom our gelatin. So I'm taking my gelatin, popping it into a bowl and adding some cold water over the top. You then want to set that to one side for five minutes until it's nice and soft. Okay, so while the gelatin is blooming, you want to move on to warming up your orange juice. You can do this in the microwave, but I prefer to do it on the stove. Okay, so once the gelatin has bloomed, you'll know it's nice and soft and you can pick it up and squeeze out all of the excess water. And then just add that into your orange juice. So once the gelatin has all dissolved, you want to pour it into a measuring jug just to make it easier to place into our moulds. And then we're just gonna slowly pour this into our sphere moulds. And I've used spheres because it's gonna be easy to get out of the silicone mould, and then it's gonna look like the yolk, which we can place on top of our egg whites. I always like to make a few more than I need, just so we have spares in case any break. And these just need to go into the fridge to set for about two hours. For our egg whites, we're gonna use a very similar method. So again, we're gonna bloom our gelatin to start by placing it into cold water. And then into the saucepan, we're going to add the ingredients for our panna cotta. So that is our milk, our double cream, our sugar, and some vanilla extract. And then we're going to heat that up, but don't let it boil. And then once your cream is nice and warm and all the sugar has dissolved, and your gelatin has bloomed, you just want to squeeze out the excess water, add that in and give it a stir until it's dissolved. Right, once that's all dissolved, pop that into a measuring jug so it's easy to pour. And then for this one, we're gonna put it into another silicone mold. This one's just a round one. And then when it comes out of the fridge, we're gonna cut it into our egg shape. And that also needs to go into the fridge for two hours until it's set. While our eggs are setting, we're gonna move on to making the toast and the sausages in our fried breakfast. And these are both gonna be made out of cake. And we're gonna do a really, really simple all-in-one method for this. As you can probably guess, you put everything into the mixer, turn it on high until it's nice and smooth, and then you are good to go. The only ingredient we're gonna leave out is the cocoa because we only want to flavor the sausages with the cocoa and we want to leave our toast as vanilla. So for this, I'm gonna add everything into the mixer. That's our butter, our sugar, our flour, two eggs, no shell, some mixed spice, and our vanilla. I'm gonna go down with the lid and mix that until it's nice and combined. All right, just give that a quick wipe down of the sides. 
just to make sure we've incorporated everything and then mix it for another 10 seconds. Right, that is looking good. So we'll just take off the bowl and pop this to one side. Now we want to leave most of this vanilla, but we are gonna take out a bit to make our sausages. So I'll just take out a rough spoonful. So to our chocolate, we're gonna add in our cocoa and then just give that a mix through. So the shape of our chocolate sausage mix doesn't actually matter too much because we're gonna crumble that up after it's baked. So I'm gonna bake these in cupcake cases and that's because they will bake nice and quickly. And then for our vanilla, we're just gonna bake that into a rectangle tray. And we do actually wanna keep those sides nice and straight because that's gonna give us the corner of our toast. And then I'm just gonna use an offset spatula to even that out. Just for ease, I'm gonna place these both onto the same baking tray and they're gonna go into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. They're really small so they cook really quickly and then we can get to decorating. I'm gonna move on to making the sauce for our baked beans and this is gonna be a peach and raspberry jam. So all we're gonna do for this, super, super simple, is add your fresh fruit into the pan along with your sugar and then we're gonna bring that up to the boil for about 10 minutes and then it should be good to go. Keep on stirring to make sure it cooks nice and evenly. It also helps if you break down the peaches as you go. You'll know it's ready once the sauce is thickened and the fruit is nice and soft. Now, because we want a smooth sauce, I'm gonna put all of this into a food processor, blitz it up and then pass it through a sieve. It's already pretty smooth, but we're just gonna pass it through the sieve to remove the seeds. Once your tomato sauce is nice and smooth, you can pop it to one side to cool while we move on to making our beans. Our beans are going to be made out of marzipan and this is really, really simple to do. All you need to do is take your marzipan, take a small pea-sized amount, roll it in your hands, and then press them till you get a sort of Bertie Bott's every flavor bean chip. Keep on going until you've got a good few tablespoons. Then once all of your beans are made, we're just gonna add them into our tomato sauce. You then want to carefully fold them in, being careful not to mess up the shape. And that is our beans done. You can now pop these to one side while we get on with the rest of our ingredients. Right, so now we're gonna finish preparing our cakes. They are nice and cooled down. So first we're gonna go with our sausages and all I'm gonna do is take the cupcakes out of their cases and pop them into a bowl. Now we're gonna turn these into a sort of cake pop. So we're gonna crumble up the cupcakes and then add in some buttercream, mix it together, and then use that to mold into our sausages. You want to mix this so it's nice and together, but you don't want it to be too wet, otherwise our sausages will fall apart. So once the cake is all together in one ball, I'm just gonna split it into two, get two sausages out of this mix and then roll it together into a sausage tip. So once you've got your sausage shapes, we're gonna neaten them up a little bit and try to make it look a little less like you know poo. So I've got some melted chocolate here, 50% milk chocolate and 50% white chocolate, and we're gonna use that just to coat over and get a nice even finish on our sausages. If you want to get a smoother finish, you can use a palette knife to even up the edges. And once you're happy with the finish, we're gonna pop these in the fridge to set up. For our toast, we're gonna to take our rectangle vanilla sponge and we're gonna slice this into some bread-sized pieces. So I'll just release it from the pan. Now, usually I would remove the caramelization that's on top, but because we want this to be like it is bread, we're gonna leave that on as it will give us a nice crust look. And I'm just gonna slice that in half. And then into triangles. It looks like bread already, but we need to go one step further to make this really toasty. So all I'm gonna do is lie them down flat and sprinkle a little bit of sugar over the top of each one. And then I'm gonna use a blowtorch to caramelize that and give it a nice golden finish. 
make sure you pay attention to the sides to get a nice authentic finish. Once you're happy with the look and smell of your toast, you can put that to one side to cool while you finish off the last of your ingredients. Next, we're gonna move on to making the bacon out of some fondant. And for this, I've got three different colors of fondant, two shades of red and one white. Don't worry, these two kind of look like they'd be raw, but we're gonna add some coloring on top afterward to bring it to life. So all we're gonna do is marble these together. Then I'm gonna shape it into a rectangle. And then we're gonna slice that into thin strips. Once you've got your nice thin slices of your bacon, we're then gonna use some skewers to make those waves in the bacon. So we're gonna lie them down, place our bacon over the top, and then squeeze it together and let it dry like that. And once you're happy with your streaky bacon rashers, you can pop them somewhere nice and cool to firm up. So for the finishing touches for our sausages and our bacon, we're gonna use some cocoa that I've mixed with hot water and then some cocoa on its own to give it a bit more of a cooked effect. Start with the liquid cocoa and we're just gonna brush this over the top. Next, we just want to take a small piece of kitchen towel and we're just gonna gently dab over those lines just to help blend them. And then the final step is to take some cocoa and a brush and dab that onto just to give it a little bit more definition. For the bacon, make sure you work most of the cocoa into the grooves. Once you're happy with them, they can go into a cool, dry place to firm up and then all we need to do is assemble. Once all your ingredients are ready, all you need to do is assemble. And for this, I am using a skillet pan, which is gonna look really nice and cool. And then we're just gonna simply stack them all in and get ready to serve our breakfast. First, we're gonna add in our toast. Then we're gonna add in our bacon. Next, we're gonna add in the baked beans. And if your jam has thickened up a bit too much, then just add a splash of orange juice in to thin it down. Next in are our sausages. Next goes in our egg whites. Place these in gently and try your best not to break them. A quick trick for the jelly is to place a silicone mold into hot water and that will help release it. So there you have it. Our desserts have been transfigured into sausages, bacon, eggs, beans, and toast. If anyone has ever told you that you can't have cake for breakfast, now you know a little trick cast a magic spell and they will never know the difference. That is all for the first recipe from the Chamber of Secrets and I hope you'll be sticking around for more. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of the new kitchen and the new set. I would love to hear your thoughts. If it's your first time visiting the kitchen then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. That is all for this week. I'm about to tuck into my brekkie so I will see you next time. That was amazing. <laughs>